Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of the game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Lost Ruins of Arnak from Czech Games Edition. Disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. As you might have noticed in my recent Dune Imperium review, I'm a fan of deck building, but worker placement sometimes leaves me cold. How did Lost Ruins of Arnak fare with that combination? Let's find out and get to the list. I'm going to start out with a con for my number 5, and that's the general challenge level of the solo AI. You have these tiles you can include, green or red, to change up the difficulty setting. I played on the hardest difficulty and still kind of destroyed the AI. And I've checked in with other people reviewing the game at the same time, and they've had similar experiences, so I think they just didn't put the difficulty and the points the AI scores at a high enough level. Now this is my number 5 because I'm not entirely sure how important it is. I could just say the AI gets a free 20 or 30 points, whatever the differential seems to be on average, and make the game challenging again. And also CGE is coming out with a solo campaign in the beginning of the new year that no one's had a chance to try out yet, and maybe that will kind of give more of an escalating gameplay to it. But for now it's a negative that only bothers me a little bit because I still have fun actually playing. For my number four, since this is a solo review, I'm looking at the solo AI, and this one is a mix, and one you've heard from me many times before, in that the AI is very quick to resolve, that's the positive side. You just flip up these tiles, and they move up their research track, or they take worker placement spaces so you can't get to them. I love how fast it is to resolve AI turns, and they do get in your way with action spaces, but at the same time, you can do very little to actually affect their score. They're going to score around the same number of points each time except for some stuff you can do in the market so it sometimes it feels like it doesn't really matter that they're there except for that minor blocking i kind of wish that the ai was a bit more interactive i guess and with my number three, I'm back to a con. Sorry to start so negative. And I do want to give the disclaimer for this point that I'm not a huge Euro fan a lot of the time for this exact reason. And that's the fact that even if I take different paths in this game, and there are definitely different things you can focus on to score points, my score ends up being about the same each time. And the experience ends up being pretty similar. And I tend to have done a little bit of everything. And that's how I feel in most Euro games, that it's kind of like a mix of tactics, but in the end my strategy tends to feel the same, and that's definitely the case here. It's still fun to try out different things, but in the end I feel like I'm going to reach the same end point. So the variety suffers, and this is one where, I hate to say it, I can see an expansion improving things, or again that solo campaign that's supposed to be coming, but with the game as is, I think after you play it four or five times, while it'll still be a fun experience, you'll be seeing the same stuff over and over. But let's finally get to a pro with my number two, something I really like, and definitely a big contrast to Dune from earlier this week, and that is the deck building here. Now, kind of like Dune, this is a very quick game. You have a very limited number of rounds, only five here, but the big difference is that they let the cards be immediate. They make them come into play quickly. One type of card you buy goes to the bottom of your deck, but your deck is going to be only like two or three cards, and then those will be the first cards you'll draw for the next turn, so you kind of set up your future. And the other type of cards, the artifacts, they get an immediate effect when you buy them, which makes them feel powerful, makes them feel impactful, impactful. There's a really nice way to kind of call your deck. If you watch my playthrough, you'll see that I basically had my whole deck going every turn, and that's what I look for in deck builders. This immediacy of card use, this powerfulness and combo-liciousness and culling. This is a deck builder after my own heart, and I really think they did a nice job here. Also with the variety in the cards. They're just fun to play around with, and they have different unique effects. Definitely a cool job. And finally, my number one is also a pro, my favorite thing about the game, and again, watch my playthrough to see this in action, and that is the great, great combo plays. This is a Euro game where you can keep on finding more resources. You do this action, that gets you a few things. That lets you do this action, that gets you a few things. Oh, then you can spend this and lose a few victory points, but it's going to let you do this action to get you even more things. And then you can buy these three cards and do even more stuff. Now, I'm not sure how this would work in multiplayer, because it 
it might make one person's turn drag on too long and make the game feel kind of slow and stale, but in solo, it's awesome. Again, if you watch my playthrough, you'll see this in rounds three and one, where I just explode out with options and just keep on doing thing after thing after thing. It makes me feel clever, like a tactical genius, and it really raises the fun level quite a bit, as I just feel like I'm doing so many cool, cool things. Overall, I think some types of gamers will really enjoy Lost Ruins of Arnak. I think solo players who like mid to lightweight Euros or like fun deck building and tactical combos will really find a lot to enjoy here. But on the other hand, I think you have to be careful coming into this one with your expectations for solo play and the AI. Their scoring might be a little wonky as you get better at the game. And while I hope the campaign will help with the variety, I can't really comment on that yet. So as the game is currently, just know it's not going to blow you away with the diversity of your play each time. And if you want to see a full solo playthrough of the game, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.